Monday, Lord. All right. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and talk about something, a little something that has been basically a big thing for like the past couple of months. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Welcome. The Gamer Man's Lounge. Awaken to play. However, we can go ahead and talk about how the game industry hasn't been doing so good and how it, it has been going under and the insert worldwide situation here has made things worse because it's uh, it's causing lockdowns, it's causing people to kind of like uh, work with regulations and quarantine regulations and whatnot and, and all this sort of jazz. However, we can just go and put it in another video. Yeah, let's just put it in another video and then pretty much include this conversation into it in a short version of it, basically. However, we want to go ahead and talk about something that is pretty much a big damn deal and that has been a big talking. I've already said what the background of it. I'm done beating around the bush. Ladies and gentlemen, video game preservation. Your retro gaming, your classic game remasters, your classic game remakes, etc. Video game preservation. Back in the good old days, there were games that really did great. It didn't need any DLC, it didn't need any day one patches, it didn't need any season passes, it didn't need any microtransactions. You just plug it in, play it, and then uh, enjoy as much as you damn well please. You adventure out in the game. Like, when you're playing Shadow Man, you explore everything from left and right, and up and down, and uh, diagonal or whatever, in order to get all those Dark Souls, and get all those power-ups, and get all those uh, weapons, and then basically get all those uh, Kato... Did I say it right? Then we have Mario Brothers, to King of Fighters, to Samurai Showdown, to Street Fighter, to Guilty Gear, to Blaze Blue, and then from Mother Loving, Soul Calibur, to Tekken, to Adventure Island, to uh, Gauntlet Legends, to all those... I'm bringing up all those classic games from... I'm doing what I can to bring up all those classic games from left to right. But however, the point here is, is that Video games back in the day used to be all about the fun and great. Then you fast forward to now, we end up with rush jobs that are pretty much altered by some mob or something, and then you get the predatory monetization practices, such as your microtransactions in the game that you've already paid $60 for, or actually $70 now, nowadays. Not only that, but you get your season passes and whatnot, but, however, this game's not a free-to-play game. You're paying $60. Why am I getting hit with microtransactions? This is something you see in a free-to-play game in order to basically see the free-to-play game to have a future, for crying out loud. Back in the day, we had a great time. And, of course, we can't help but basically go ahead and check out games of the past and play the games of the past to even especially take a break from all those microtransactions and, and all those rush jobs and all those uh, shenanigans that's been going on with the entertainment industry and some moral political thingy or whatever is going on. And that's where I will wind up introducing you to the idea of retro gaming and, of course, video game preservation in a nutshell. When it comes to video game preservation, it can be in the form of collecting those retro games and playing those retro games. Retro gaming, another form is basically retro game remasters, classic games being remastered for modern technology, and of course remakes. Games being remade for modern technology. And however, I have seen good bang-up jobs for remakes when it came to Panzer Dragoon Remake and Trials of Mana Remake. And, uh, yeah, Trials of Mana Remake did made it on my top five best of 2020. <laughs> Amazing. However, when it comes to... Oh, yeah, House of the Dead Remake. I can't wait to see that happen. That would be fantastic. Hopefully that Sindin Light Gun gets, like, finalized and ready for the market by the time it gets released. And you know what? Maybe I should hold off for a PC release. You know what? Actually, I'll go check out what the Switch mode does, or actually Switch Joy-Con does. Because, hey, I'm a big House of the Dead uh, nerd. I'm a big light gun game nerd. 
who likes stuff to shoot at on the screen. I played Duck Hunt. Now I went from Duck Hunt to goddamn House of the Dead 2, and then straight to the House of the Dead games, and then basically Time Crisis, Time Crisis 2, okay? Well, yeah, we're, we're going there. We're, we're stra Area 51, oh yeah, yeah. Basically, in when it comes to fighting games, light gun games, platformer games, or beat em up games, and all that kind of stuff, arcade games, or arcade style games become more of my thing. Man, I remember the good old days where I would just wind up every time I go to the mall, go to the arcades, go to the arcades and have a good time with it. Oh, there's a movie theater? Oh, hey, arcades! Hell yeah! Oh, sweet! And then all of a sudden, throw an arcade machine in there that's not even a prize machine? I'm gonna have a good fucking time. Hell yeah! I'm in a fucking market. And uh, yeah, arcades were a big thing. But however, I would like to have arcade experiences in my home just to remember the good old days in the event that something happened to these arcades and I may not be able to go to these arcades anymore. Which is why I got the Dreamcast version of Gauntlet Legends. Because it has more of the arcade feel compared to the Nintendo 64. You like the Nintendo 64 version better? More power to you. But however, with that totally said, I'm more of a fan when it comes to the arcade experience of Gauntlet Legends. I love the CG cutscenes that happen and then occur. It just makes me feel more like I'm playing the arcade. But hey, just because I'm a big, huge guy for arcade stuff doesn't mean I'm like crazy for the uh, arcade stuff exclusively. Whew, I saved myself right there. But anyway, that totally said, I play on the Dooms, the Quakes, Serious Sam's, whatnot. Hey, however, I just want to go ahead and just say, if, throughout the let's just sum everything up in this whole big thing. Video game preservation is really a big damn deal. You're, it's not just revisiting games of the past. It's going back and pretty much going to play the games you missed out on. You're given the second chance to play some of the games that you missed out on from left and right. And speaking of that, I do want to go ahead and say this. When it comes to the list of games and list of systems I played when I was a kid, I'm like, I look back and I'm like, wow, I have missed out on quite a lot. I am really, to be honest with you, I, I really was not ever bright and I was really behind and I was really missing out a whole lot of the time and when it comes to me being a video game collector, me being a retro gamer and with all these remasters coming out from left and right and uh, especially when it comes to some games that I struggled with and I were able to figure out fully and I never get to play more of and I never get further more of anyway that's also something I'm not very proud of but hey when it comes to basically going back to what I missed out on or pretty much improving upon the games that I've played on the past, both, I'm doing what I can to basically get myself like uh, going, get myself caught up, get myself in gear and get myself basically like uh, going further and further and further and, and progressing further and further in games that I missed out on and games that I struggled with when I was playing it as a kid. The Sega Dreamcast and the Sega Saturn. My goodness, there were games that I wanted to play more of, such as House of the Dead, Virtual Fighter, Panzer Dragoon, and pretty much House of the Dead 2. Well, I've been playing a lot of it, the very many get a hold of the Dreamcast. But D2, D2 on the Dreamcast. Holy shit. Dream, yeah, Dreamcast game, D2. Okay, really great. And there are tons of Dreamcast and Saturn games that caught my eye, caught my attention, and I completely missed out on those games that I even wanted to play, and I really get, and I, and I kind of kick myself for it. Uh, really, I just, uh, especially I kick myself when I'm down about it. And the Neo Geo, when it comes to the Neo Geo, I know that the system was pricey and expensive and all that kind of stuff, but they were out in the arcades from left to right, and really, to be honest with you here, there's less and less of an excuse to discover more of the Neo Geo stuff. I've missed out on the Neo Geo stuff, and I'm really thankful that Hamster and SNK have been coming out and getting Neo Geo games out there into modern technology, especially coming out with those Neo Geo mini consoles, such as the Neo Geo Mini 
and the Neo Geo Arcade Stick Pro, which is like an arcade stick, which you could use as a PC gamepad, or an Android gamepad, or just hook a HDMI to the arcade stick and you could play the pre-built-in games from left and right. It's pretty crazy. And uh, the Hamsters Arcade Archives Neo Geo lineup. Definitely great, and it gave me like a list of games to check out from left and right, especially when it came to Samurai Showdown 5 Special and all that kind of stuff. But hey, at, at least all this Neo Geo stuff is getting like remastered, either that or being re released and emulated for modern technology from left and right, and I'm glad. And of course, when it comes to, well, building up your library, that's another reason when it comes to video game preservation. In the event things go downhill in our game industry, we got those classic games to pick up and play from left to right in case things go down and hard. It's all about pretty much having your library expanded from left and right and pretty much just get everything and all this shenanigans done and dealt with from left and right. If things go down and you have so little to play, that can create an issue, and that can pretty much be of an issue. Alright? It is what it is. So, yeah, you can... Oh, no, I'll just settle for the little... Settle for the... Are you sure you can settle for the little you have in your library? Y you're really sure about that? I... I... Yeah. Th that's another thing. Whether it's those emulated re-releases for the modern market or you're kind of using like emulators and ROMs yourselves, whatever method you are for your retro gaming, whether it's retro gaming, remasters and remakes, video game history is got to be preserved. It has to be preserved. Video game history to be preserved is a big deal. Video game preservation is a big damn deal at the end of the day. And when companies do these things like shutting off stores and coming up with C-bomb DRMs from left and right, or basically coming out with a 3D All-Stars and releasing it for a little time, okay, it's not helping video game preservation. Video game preservation is a big damn deal, and I have to say this, but this does not help video game preservation at all. This hurts video game preservation, and video game preservation, I have to say, like I said, I'm going to repeat it again, Video game preservation is a big damn deal. And really, to be honest with you here, video game history has played a big role in today's games from left and right. Alright, some games from left and right. It has played huger, huger roles. Like, um, a Night Dive, when they do their remasters and remakes, damn. Holy damn, when M2 does their emulated compilation discs, such as the Sega Ages download lineup, or the Castlevania collection, or their Sega Genesis Mini. Holy damn! And when you're doing sequels, especially sequels after a long time, you gotta keep in mind the old games of the past from left and right, and pretty much get a hold of what made those previous games good from left and right and left and right, and add those new things to the table. When it comes to Streets of Rage 4, they had to go back to Streets of Rage 1 and 2 and 3. They had to look through what made those three games good, and they applied it over there. And then they added their new beautiful hand-drawn art style from left to right, and it looked amazing. Streets of Rage 4 was an amazing fourth entry, and it was great. Alright, now, when it comes to that one game that the Angry Video Game Nerd took a look at, I had to go look it up. Ninja Baseball Batman. That looks like a very interesting beat-em-up that, uh, let's just say, should have been ported to a console in the first place and should have been made for modern consoles in the first place, even not. All right, Hamster should be getting a hold of this and or someone. Someone has to get a hold of this game and get it out there for modern technology. All right. Uh, th because guess what? This game is a beat-em-up that has been pretty much arcade exclusive. And uh, if, the, if the Angry Video Game Nerds are having a good time with that game, I'm jumping on that one. I, I, I gotta check that out. Oh, and also, I'm gonna say this. I have to say this. Panzer Dragoon Saga. Burning Rangers. Those two games need to be remade, either that or remastered. 
okay? Remastered or remade? Those two games. Hell, the whole Panzer Dragoon series should be remade, and I'm glad we got Panzer Dragoon Remake. Yay. But when you have something that's running, like, at around $500 and up, $500 and up, yeah, that's grounds for a remaster remake. And Clock Tower, Rule of Rose, man, all those games that do need to be remastered or remade. Especially Rule of Rose. Yeah, I fucking hate myself for losing my copy of Rule of Rose. I had Rule of Rose, and I had a blast with Rule of Rose. I wind up losing my PS2 copy of Rule of Rose. What the fuck is wrong with me? Holy fucking shit. There, ah, oh, for fuck's sake. Okay. But with that totally said, with stuff totally said and out of the way, you get the idea. Video game preservation is pretty much... I have to say this. When it comes to video game preservation, whether it being retro gaming through whatever means, your remakes, remaster, re-releases for modern technologies, etc. When you're preserving video game history, it's really big and important for those three reasons. One, you're going back to the past and pretty much playing the things that make you happy again. Two, you're pretty much expanding your library from left to right in the event things go down. And essentially, three, you can go ahead and get an opportunity to check out what you missed out on in the past. And this totally said right here is why video game preservation is a big damn deal. It is a huge deal. It is a big thing. That totally said, that is all, and I will be looking forward to you in the next video. Peace out. This is nothing but a video product made by a fellow gamer man. Ayo! Hey,